Also got this King Air 300 in here right now, uh, and we have the right hand engine apart due for a hot section inspection. So this is a the 300 and the uh, King Air 350s have a PT6-60 uh, Alpha engine. It's the same engine, uh, both 300 and 350. So uh, it's kind of, it's classed as a large PT6. You're looking at uh, 1050 horse. So quite a powerful little engine. I forget the amount of uh, torque that these things uh, put out, but it's, it's just something stupid for, for what they are and how small they are. Pretty impressive. Uh, but we have this one split right now. This is what it looks like kind of when doing a hot section. We're just in the process of putting it all back together. But we are right now looking at the compressor turbine. So th this engine only has a single compressor turbine. So this wheel right here is what's driving the compressor. All of the compressors back here. Here's the, uh, and again on a PT6, it's a reverse flow, so the intake is at the back. There's a screen that goes right here, we just have it off to, to inspect the blades, but the first stage compressor is in here. So the air comes through underneath and gets pulled up through there, compressed, compressed as it goes forward. And right in here too, which we also have out, is, this would be the outer liner of the burner can. So what happens is the air gap underneath, you can't see it anymore, but in behind there is the, the discharge, if you will, of the centrifugal compressor, which is the very last stage of compression on the PT6. So the air gets, the now pressurized air, getting squeezed, squeezed, squeezed in the front section, gets pushed back and distributed all around the outside of here. And it gets bled into this can through these numerous holes. These, these holes are for not only for obviously letting the oxygen in to be burnt, but mostly for cooling. And there's so many different iterations of these cans of different cooling hole numbers, different shapes, uh, different coatings on these cans. The ceramic coating on this one here now. This is the outer can, the inner liner is right here on the bench. We have to bolt that in just yet, but it's apart right now anyway and so picture this outer or sorry inner liner kind of as a wall right here so air fills up in here and this is where it gets mixed with the fuel as well all these little holes right now that you see and on the outside where they're all taped up because the nozzles are sent out getting clean right now but those are the fuel nozzles so that's where the fuel gets sprayed and they point backwards and so that's where the fuel is sprayed to start it. You got one igniter right here. And on the other side, that's it protruding through there. And the other igniter is down here. So there's two igniters. And that's just for starting and for if you're running in crazy weather. But anyway, fuel gets ignited. Fuel and air get ignited and the it starts moving. Now the burned exhaust moves back the other way to the rear of the engine and around you can't see it but there's an opening behind here so what happens is it gets burnt goes around the corner and then kind of comes back comes back this way on the other side of this wheel is called the uh, well the stator vein and it's a bunch of veins that are directing that now superheated exhaust into these turbine blades spinning them the proper way which would be this way actually so it rotates the wheel and there's a bolt a giant bolt that holds this wheel onto the shaft which spins the uh, all the compressors so when I spin this wheel it spins the whole entire compressor and this is the part of the PT6 where this kind of demonstrates a free turbine there's nothing that physically connects the propeller, which I'll show you in a second, and the power section to the rear of the engine. So on a PT6 or any other free turbine engines, uh, and it's easier to visualize a, a turboprop, I can hold the propeller still on one of these while the engine is starting. And even after it started, if you could hold onto it that tight, and the engine would continue to run. 
this would still spin and the gas generator would still well obviously be supplying the, the air through to be burnt but there's nothing physically connecting the propeller and what's driving the airplane to the rest of the engine the only thing pulling you through the air is the amount of exhaust gases rushing over the power turbine blades which looks similar to these but they're in the, the the front half which I can show you in a second pretty cool but um, that's how prop brakes work on some airplanes uh, the Saab 340 has an optional propeller brake none of ours do they all got deleted because apparently they're a pain in the ass they break down all the time but essentially it's like a big uh, disc brake the disc is bolted to the back of the propeller and there's a caliper and brake pad sort of thing that you can clamp the propeller to stop it from spinning which won't which won't shut off the engine because a G C T7 which is in the Saab is is also a free turbine so the, the, the blade stops turning but the engine continues to run and you can use it as kind of a, an APU you can run all the environmental systems you can still generate power it just bet it's safer for ground crew because there's not a, a propeller spinning around so ATR 42s have that as well and a, a number of other machines do if you've ever heard or seen of a prop brake it's essentially that's what it is it's just a giant brake uh, disc brake but anyway this this hot section we're putting it back together it all looked good these um, you measure the clearances because of course this is now this and in behind this is one of the hottest parts of the engine it gets stupid hot in here so hence the hot section inspection and uh, so this stuff sees some pretty insane temperatures I don't know the alloys what everything is made up of but it's probably pretty fancy as I was saying this is the hottest section of the engine it, this wheel and in behind here because these freshly burnt gases are explosively escaping rearward and then kind of curving and then coming back out this way to drive this and then as it goes farther driving the power turbine so these this is what gets uh, damaged most often is this CT wheel and these shrouds uh, some of them will rub on the shrouds so you have to check the clearances of each and one of these uh, segments if the clearances are too tight there's actually a grinding tool that mounts in here and you can grind away to make the clearances bigger the reason some of your clearances will tighten up over time is the uh, usually it's on the on the edges of the segment so see how it's split there and there so usually it's the ends that kind of curl up with the heat and then it gets to be too tight and it needs to be ground down um, yeah that's that's what it looks like inside I believe this is the C flange I think it's called that we split it at I don't know how many bolts but enough of them anyway and the whole front of the engine just there's nothing that connects it in inside the engine it's it's all external all these linkages and shit that you have to take off but inside the engine there's there's nothing that links what I'm about to show you to, to back here so you just take out all these bolts and literally just pull it off that's all there is to it okay so once again I apologize for the loud heater so I'm gonna to try to talk over it but here's the power section from that same engine so you can see the exhaust here the propeller gearbox on a PT6 is whatever is for is is this part here and this whole section from this flange forward inside the case is the propeller gearbox you have your accessories bolted on here the main propeller governor the uh, this is the tack generator for the uh, and your NP to give you your prop speed the propeller itself and on the far side is your overspeed governor and then you have your oil pressure transducers and your auto feather switches and all that that whole fun stuff but um, this is the flange where we were looking at before on the back half of the engine the C flange so this is where it physically bolts to this fancy wiring here coming down well, as you can see it, it comes up through here 
and this is what you call your T5 harness or your ITT harness. This is what gives you the indication of your interstage turbine temperature is what ITT stands for but as you can see it comes to these rings that are made up of uh, God, what is it? Alumel and chromel or something like that. Some dissimilar metals that resistances, yeah, AL, CR. And these are the probes themselves, these little, these little guys here. And there's a few of them all around. So these are reading the exhaust gas temperatures just after they pass through the compressor turbine which we saw earlier and this is the power turbine stator one of them here this part doesn't spin but it just redirects the exhaust gases to hit the power turbine which is in there at a better angle if I had a light I could show you but picture it's just another t turbine anyway and there's two stages of power turbine on this engine so there's another there's yet another wheel past that that extracts the exhaust gases and turns them into the driving force to to spin it and uh, what else can I show you but yeah here's there's physically no connection as you can see there's nothing there's no drive shaft there's no anything so if I spin the propeller all it's turning in here is those two wheels two turbine wheels which are sitting probably there and there and those wheels are in turn there's a drive shaft that connects them through this more exhaust can to the uh, reduction gearbox up here I don't know the speeds off the top of my head I don't know what these would be spinning at if I had to guess maybe 25 30,000 rpm maybe uh, I'm not hundred percent sure on that so don't quote me but then your prop, something this size, max RPM on the King Air 300 and 350 is 1700 RPM. So if you do the math there for a gear ratio, that's where all that glorious torque comes from in these things. They just are <laughs> gobs of torque. In this reduction gearbox, they can convert something spinning that fast into something spinning that slow. It's, it's pretty amazing. But um, yeah. That's kind of the gist of it, so power turbines are in here, the ITT probes are what you see here, and they get tested every time that we do a hot section. Uh, they kind of go bad after a while, as you can imagine, living in that hot gas. Like, So they go bad and they can be changed out, and the harnesses can be changed out, but I think these ones all tested fine. So this engine actually looks in really good shape, and we're going to be putting her all back together. And yeah. As always, any other questions, feel free to ask me and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. But maybe a few of you will find this interesting and uh, yeah, talk to you later.